wonderful. The CSRA is full of incredible teachers. Join us for a special presentation as we recognize their amazing efforts in the classroom. The Golden Apple Awards, Thursday, May 9th at 7 on News Channel 6. Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Hopefully you enjoyed the sunshine today because we've got storms on the way for tomorrow. I'll time it all out for you coming up in the 5 for 6 forecast. It's a little bit louder than normal, and then we heard a pop. And the guy knew, like, instantly, like, hey, something's wrong, and then he heard this crash, and, like, the whole, the earth shook. And, like, I knew, like, that was a plane crash. That was, that's not good. Right now, on News Channel 6 and 4, one person dead after a plane crash in a neighborhood in Augusta. What we know about the pilot and the investigation. Team coverage from the scene as News Channel 6 and 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Hello, everybody. I'm Grant Means. We do thank you for joining us. Jenny is on assignment. Coverage you can count on begins at 4 with the latest on the breaking news we've been bringing you all day long. New at 4, the pilot in that deadly plane crash in Augusta has been identified. News Channel 6 confirming. Jason McKenzie, who worked at Augusta University as an associate director of philanthropy, was the pilot and the victim in the crash. The news also confirmed by First Baptist Church of Augusta, where McKenzie was a member, his plane bound for New Haven, Connecticut, when it went down in the front yard of a home at the intersection of Hillcrest Avenue and Belmont Drive. That's in the Forest Hills neighborhood of Augusta. It happened about 7-12 this morning. The neighborhood heavily populated with homes. The plane did hit some trees before it went down. It did not touch those homes. McKenzie confirmed to have been the only one on board, and he is certainly being credited tonight with saving lives by avoiding all those houses. FAA investigators, by the way, reaching this scene about an hour ago, working to determine what went wrong aboard that plane. They say McKenzie was an experienced pilot. I knew him. He was. He was a great pilot. About 800 hours of flying time just last year. They say there was no distress call because Daniel Field does not have a tower for that. They also say they are not going to speculate at this point on his flight path. All the airplane is here. We're not missing anything. Uh, over my right shoulder, as you can see up in the tree, there's a, the outboard section of the left wing is up there. And we're making arrangements right now to get that down so we can continue our investigation. Also, several power lines were affected by this. And we're working with power company in Georgia Power right now to restore power so, and, ma and make the scene safe so that the team can go in and, and uh, start the investigation. The NTSB says they're going to be out there for 24, maybe 36 hours before they take the plane over to Griffin, Georgia, to investigate. News Channel 6 is Barkley Bishop, live now from Hillcrest Avenue. Been there all day long as well. And, Bark, we talked about it before, but I'm telling you, Jason McKenzie is being called a hero. Oh, uh, a hero is just one of the many incredible words that's being described of Jason McKenzie. It's incredible, right? You were out here with me earlier, but for those viewers who hadn't seen this video yet, this is the scene. Look at how close that plane crashed to that house. An absolute miracle, especially this morning, whenever you have people walking out around 7 o'clock, you have people pushing their strollers and running, and it was a chaotic scene this morning. Very, very chaotic, quiet now, but like I said, nothing like what we saw just a few hours ago. Pretty shocked. Yeah. Wouldn't expect it. Quiet Augusta neighborhood rocked Thursday morning. News quickly spreading that Jason McKenzie was the pilot of this single engine plane that crashed in the front lawn of this home on the corner of Hillcrest Avenue and Belmont Drive. Well, I went over there to see if anybody was in it or, you know, but at that point it was too late. Um, the plane was, had already exploded, was engulfed. Investigators tell News Channel 6 around 7 a.m. McKenzie took off from Daniel Field, and shortly after, he tried to return when the crash happened, somehow navigating through the trees just enough to avoid another tragedy. It's definitely a miracle. Just by looking at it, uh, the pilot was experienced, well experienced, because otherwise he could have landed that plane, like we said, on a house, uh, on top of a car. District 3 Commissioner Catherine Smith-McKnight, one of the many homeowners in this area. 
damaged trees and, and power lines and knocked out power. But he, but he protected everybody else. Augusta Fire Chief Antonio Burden with the same thoughts. Uh, and we can only credit that pilot for that situation for uh, having the wherewithal to not involve another structure. Kenzie leaves behind a wife and young son, and now they know what a true hero he really was perhaps preventing more lives from being lost on a day these neighbors will never forget. Stephanie McKenzie is his wife. I know her. It, it's heartbreaking uh, for her family, but we do know that they have a strong, strong knit community here that are going to rally around them, especially this pilot community that knew Jason so well. As far as the NTSB is concerned, they said they're going to be here throughout the evening, and that plane wreckage is going to be here for about the next 24 to 36 hours. Then they're going to come back this uh, tomorrow morning and try to survey some more as well. And sheriff's deputies are going to be here to secure the scene throughout the night, and they are going to try to open up some of this area so that those who live in this area can get through um, a little bit faster tonight and in the coming days. But it's going to be about a week before we get a preliminary report from the NTSB. Of course, as soon as we get that, we'll bring it your way. Right. Barkley Bishop, live in West Augusta. Thank you for your work today. The Exchange Club of Augusta remembering Jason McKenzie at its meeting this afternoon. Graham Lee is live in our satellite news center with that part of the story. Graham. Brad, certainly mixed emotions today at the Exchange Club of Augusta. They celebrated their annual Youth of the Year Awards luncheon, but they mentioned him during their opening prayer. Now, his father, Don, was a longtime member of the Augusta Exchange Club, and members say Jason went to the Ex Augusta Exchange Club fair as a child. That prayer led by former associate pastor of First Baptist Church of Augusta, Roger Murchison, who is a current member of the Exchange Club. I got to catch up with him after the luncheon, and he says the news is devastating, knowing what McKenzie meant to the community. When you met Jason, uh, you, you like Jason. Friendly, outgoing. Um, he's the kind of person that uh, uh, if you talk to, you realize uh, he's very sincere and very open uh, in, in life. Uh, Love to play golf. Uh, and so uh, this community is sad. Exchange Club President Mike Downing did not want to comment about the crash at this time. You'll hear more reaction from Exchange Club members tonight on News Channel 6 at 6. Brad. Graham Lee, the quiet Forest Hills and Somerville neighborhoods really were rocked awake this morning by the sound of that crash. News Channel 6's senior reporter George Eskelis standing by live for us. George, I'm telling you, for that neighborhood, the sound of airplanes coming and going from Daniel Field, that's the sound of everyday life there. Uh, Brad, absolutely. It happens uh, nearly every day and sometimes several times a day with the airport so close. These residents have an ear for airplanes. Now, residents I talked to say before the crash this morning, what they heard wasn't usual. It was louder than normal and there was a popping sound signifying to them uh, something terribly, uh, terribly was going wrong. So I asked them, with the uh, airport so close, are they concerned about having the flight path directly above their homes? I thought about it a little bit this morning, and sort of, but not really. Um, you know, like, we see planes constantly all day, and so it's just kind of one of those things. It's like something's bound to happen eventually, but, you know, for the number of planes that have flown over a house, it, all things considered, it seems pretty safe, but, you know, anything can happen. Now, Becky Sheely, the longtime manager at Daniel Field, says any decision that would be made to prevent airplanes from flying over people's homes would have to be made by the FAA. That's not something Daniel Field could make on its own. Reporting live in Augusta, George Escala, Brad, back to you. George, thank you. And really, it's rare, historically speaking, that planes flying out of or landing at Daniel Field crash. But yes, it happens. Think back to 2000. Remember a plane crashed into the brick retaining wall of the Augusta Waterworks building? Former Senator Tom Allgood, his wife, the pilot all lost their lives. In 2020, a single plane crashed into a fence at the airport. The pilot tried to land the plane on the runway but could not stop. He suffered minor injuries. And in 2007, a plane carrying a pilot and student crashed into the Augusta Municipal Golf Course. Both were unharmed. Folks, we are continuously updating WJBF.com as new information comes into our newsroom. We will have all of our coverage from today posted there.
Now, though, let's take our first look at the weather. Meteorologist Miller Hyatt standing Now, I'll have those details coming up in your Viper 6 forecast. Brett? I'm Miller, thanks. New information for you now. The officer-involved shooting that happened in Allendale County, South Carolina. This was Saturday afternoon near Razor Road and Carroll Street. Sergeant James Hall Jr. was patrolling the area, actually investigating reports of a shooting when somebody shot at him several times. Hall was taken to the hospital, no word on his condition. A third arrest in the case of a missing Aiken County mother. Officers arresting 46-year-old Clyde Henley II this morning at his home on Front Street. He's charged with accessory after the fact to the murder of Jamila Smith. She has been missing since December. Two others already facing charges. Daniel Harmon there accused of murder and kidnapping. Brian Hampton Jr. also charged with accessory after the fact. Smith's body has not been recovered. The search continues for two suspects, wanted in connection with the shooting at Augusta Mall. Kayshawn Neely and Simone Tanksley, both wanted for aggravated assault. If you see them, call the law. 24-year-old Tyria Nelson, as we've told you, already in jail in connection to the case. Police say she helped the suspect leave the scene. And the search continues for a 15-year-old, wanted for murder in connection to the deadly shooting of another teen. Darion Tanksley, wanted in the shooting death of 14 year old Anthony Harrison. Police say Tanksley is known to frequent the Richmond Hill Road area and Barton Village. Contact law enforcement if you can help with that case. Still ahead, the site of the former law enforcement center near downtown Augusta is ready for development. What some leaders have in mind when we come back. Great yourselves for a wild weather ride with temperature swings and storm chances. I'll have details straight ahead in your 5 for 6 forecast. Hi. How about this? Big change. Black excellence. It's importance goes beyond just a single month each year. That's why News Channel 6 proudly presents Celebrating Black Excellence 365. Each month we'll highlight an individual or organization who inspires their community and improves the lives of people around them. If you know a deserving recipient, visit WJBF.com and fill out the nomination form. Celebrating Black Excellence 365, only on News Channel 6. How about this? Big changes coming for the former law enforcement center in downtown Augusta. News Channel 6's Nikita Dennis has that. It's a project that's been underway for almost three years. And now the demolition of Augusta's old law enforcement center is complete. City leaders sat with representatives from the Urban Land Institute Atlanta Wednesday, mapping out what they plan to do with the property. So they're going to be representing those voices that you're talking about that are asking the question, what are we planning here? And uh, what our panel is going to do is we're interviewing those commissioners today to really aggregate all of that um, you know, community input and, and goodwill about what they would like to see. Representatives with ULI say knowing what used to be at 401 Walton Way could bring challenges. It's not certain what it will become just yet, but they're taking recommendations for the redevelopment into consideration. I think a lot of the challenges are going to be engineering and structural, that um, the certain road conditions, the grade, the fact that the road starts to go above grade, traffic speeds are pretty high. Cal Ray with the Augusta Economic Development Authority says they're leaving it up to the Urban Land Institute to decide how they want to move forward with the property. So we have, I mean, given guidance on the community, took them on a tour of the community today to show them what's being developed in other general areas around the site. But as to a use of that site specifically, we are leaving that open for them so that they can hear from the community and then come back with recommendations to us. Don't go away. Meteorologist Miller Hyatt up next with a look at your Viper 6 forecast. Weather headlines on WGBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. Call all nine. As we go into your Tuesday, and that means the warmer temperatures as well. All right, Miller, we appreciate you. Coming up, the Exchange Club of Augusta holding its annual Youth of the Year award ceremony today. Always so special. We'll take you there next. There's a lot to the best. Patient centers near you. 
over the years, thousands of people have gotten their hands on one. And who knows, you could be next. Win your very own Good Morning Augusta coffee mug at wjbf.com slash coffee club. Sponsored by Honda Cars of Aiken. The Six mobile app. Download it today. The Exchange Club of Augusta hosting its annual Youth of the Year Awards today. And there she is, Ava Bai, out of Davidson Fine Arts, your winner this year. Ava, we see you. Way to go. Every year, the club selects an outstanding high school student from schools in Richmond and Columbia counties. It is uh, so important with all of the, the bad news, sad news, tough news uh, to recognize people that are doing really great things. This is an annual event for the Exchange Club, and we, we always look forward to celebrating those youth, youth that have uh, uh, separated themselves. Mm. We recognized 12 students at our Exchange Club meeting today, and Bai is going to move on to the district level to compete there, and I bet she's going to make it to national. Well, that's it for this half hour. There's a lot more coming up on News Channel 6 at 4.30 as we continue to follow the breaking news out of Augusta. A pilot dead after a plane crash in a local neighborhood. Coverage continues in a moment. At Tile Center, our highly trained design professionals will discuss your ideas and provide helpful suggestions to help you create that dream room from beginning to end. Our goal is to provide excellent customer service that instills confidence in our clients about the quality of products you select for your home. Come see why for yourself at any of our locations at Tile Center or online at tilecenter.com. Your tile and stone experts. Just like